A lot of people are watching along with us. Things are going to be taken a lot further. It does keep the flow really, really nicely, which makes it a show that was really ahead of its time. Where's that petrified eyeball at now? Who's had it last? Macy is amazing, and she doesn't care about what other people think about her. Don't you feel like maybe Dodie represents the instinctive animal ugly part of us? I might have just been having a bad day when I gave it the math. Hello and welcome to We're In Between, the podcast that discusses about an episode of As Told by Ginger once a week, every week. And this time we're discussing Losing Nana Bishop. It's episode 27 of the series and it aired on March 31st, 2002. This one was written by our friend Eric Casimiro, or I should say your friend, you, Ashley and Patricia's friend. I unfortunately was not able to make it for that one, but in this episode, Dodie and Hoodsy's grandmother passes away. Mrs. Bishop wants Hoodsy to speak at the funeral, but he ha doesn't know what to say because he wasn't really close to his grandmother. Uh, this experience inspires Ginger to learn more about her own grandmother, and she calls her dad. She watches some old home, home movies to learn that uh, her and her grandmother had a special bond. In our B-plot, Carl and Hoodsy accidentally lock themselves in shackles and an iron mask when they lose the key. Uh, and I'm really happy to introduce this episode. It's one of my favorites of the entire series, one of the ones we've covered before on FNN. And I just love pretty much everything about this episode. Yeah, definitely. And it's interesting that, once again, we're going over to a Dodie-centric episode, but it's one that's actually really good. In fact, this may be my absolute favorite Dodie-centric episode, because we do see her struggles with her grandmother passing away, and we see on Hoodsy's perspective of how he's not really sad. So, um, in our interview with Eric Casimiro, he talked about this particular episode, about how this was based off of an experience that he had when his grandmother passed away, and he wasn't as sad about her passing compared to everybody else. So that was where the inspiration of this episode came from. Yeah, that's a cool backstory, and I like that the episode kind of dives right into it, that Dodie, not Hoodsy, gets off the phone. She goes, guys, I have to go. My Nana just died. And just right there, that's the episode. You know, a few minutes in, um, totally, you know, they don't try to beat around the bush, they don't come up with any euphemism, it's just, my nana just died, and then it's, okay, now we have to deal with this and figure out how to support our friend. It's a really impressive feat that they pulled off this episode. Yeah, it's another one of those episodes that, as told by Ginger does, that other shows just won't touch these same, t or at least not other cartoons, will touch these same deep topics in such a real straightforward way. And I think, specifically, looking at, and we'll, we'll get into it more, but looking into sort of Hoodsy's reaction to it and sort of this idea of, you know, when somebody dies that you're not particularly close to and sort of that confusing set of emotions that a lot of people, I think, go through um, and sort of not knowing, you know, like I'm supposed to be sad, but I'm not. And again, just, just those sorts of things are not talked about on other shows. And I think they do it just so, so well in this episode. Yeah, I definitely do agree. And once again, it's another episode where both of the plots are interwoven into one, which is fantastic because, as we've mentioned before, those are some of, uh, you know, some of our favorite episodes were um, about when two of uh, when the Carlin Hussey plot and the Ginger plot kind of wove together into one. So... Uh, yeah, so we have um, Dodie really upset about her Nana passing away, and she tells stories about her Nana, about how she treated her to ice cream, and about how the ice cream man chumped her change, and so she karate chopped the ice cream man, and about how she got her pigtails from her Nana Bishop, saying that every woman needs a trademark, and she, and then she, we see a picture of her and um, and Nana Bishop together, and how they're really happy towards one another, and when she starts telling more stories to Ginger and Macy she starts feeling a little bit more better and this is how 
uh, we get into Ginger's perspective in this episode about how she wants to be able to learn more about her grandmother. Yeah, I thought it's a really artful and nice way to make it, you know, it, it is about Dodie and the Bishop family in this episode, but to tie it to our protagonist, it's like, okay, grandparents, I don't know my grandmother, time to, you know, really dig into this history, and the way that she does it is so classic Ginger, and so within character, and so incredibly well written, and incredibly performed. I don't think we give Melissa Disney, I think we don't give her enough credit for the voice acting for Ginger, because I think she just does such a phenomenal job as this sort of, not only a narrator, but a character who does all these actions propelling the plot forward, you know, she's both passive and active, and I think Melissa does an incredible job of that. She absolutely does. She does such a good job. And I think, honestly, even the characters I don't love as much do great voices. But I think Ginger just does encapsulate so much of the show, right? I mean, she's the title character and she does, you know, sort of most of the things sort of circle around her. So it's it's just great to see how well she captures that sort of, that's the word I'm looking for, not adulthood, not childhood. What's adolescence? That's the word I'm looking for. Struggled, made it through. <laughs> so, um, yeah, cutting into the Carl and Hoodsy plot, we start off with Carl and Hoodsy purchasing shackles and an iron mask, and they want to become escape artists, similar to like Harry Houdini. And at first, it doesn't go very well because it turns out that they only got one key from the two items as opposed to two. So, Carl is stuck with the shackles throughout the entire episode. And, um, and then later on, uh, they lose the key to the mask, and Hoodie puts it on by accident, and he gets himself shut. But before that, it's kind of funny that, um, you know, with Carl and Hoodie wanting to become escape artists, um, you know, it's, you know, of course, a typical Carl and Hoodie thing that they would plan out these wacky shenanigans. But it's not the main focus of the episode. In fact, it's dropped pretty quickly when we find out about uh, Nana Bishop's passing. So it goes from the scheme to immediately going over to Hoodie's perspective, in which he He's the one who's going to have to give the speech in the funeral. And Hoodsy doesn't know what to do because he never really had a close relationship with his grandmother compared to Dodie. He's not very sad about it. And he kind of feels out of place compared to everybody else who's devastated. We see Dodie get devastated and we see their father crying his eyes out, being absolutely devastated because that was his mom. And he's out there choosing the dress for her. And he's just, every time that we see him, he's really emotional. He's crying. So... Yeah, you do. I mean, it's a good episode, you know, to showcase more of Hoodsy's dad, because the only time in which we do see him, he's kind of like either in the background or he's just sitting around watching TV. Yeah, it's certainly the biggest outburst we get of that character. And I, I felt bad laughing, but I it's so ridiculous that it's almost funny. Yeah, and also speaking of laughing and death, uh, even Macy kind of has these uncomfortable chuckling moments whenever they're discussing about Nana Bishop's passing, and she's kind of really embarrassed by it because she feels incredibly nervous. Even when they were discussing about how um, they have to go over to the funeral, N Macy's never seen a dead body before, and she's really scared of going, but being the amazing character that she is, she's willing to go over there at the cost of being incredibly frightful. She says, I'm going to be over there that's what makes a bff yeah showcasing again just their incredible friendship and even at this young age how much they're able to stand by each other in these sort of difficult times and i think macy specifically is always very good with that she's truly just always thinking of other people more than herself and god i love macy i know i say that anytime she ever comes up but she's fantastic yeah her insistence on going is so moving. And it's kind of funny, too, you know, just her ridiculous over the, you know, I can't look at dead bodies, but her saying, no, I'm going to be there because Jody's my friend and she needs me there is just amazing. Another great moment is Ginger sitting on the couch thinking of her grandma and then picks up the phone to call her dad. And, you know, remember that walk you off, you said we could go on? I, I would like to do that. And she goes with him and his dog. And we were watching this one out of order way back when, when we did our episode um, it was a little disorienting to have to play catch up, you know, in terms of her relationship with her dad, but in context, it was even better. I just love the way that that scene is written, especially when they somehow jail comes up and she goes, well, I'm the jailbird of this family, remember? And he goes, huh? She goes, never mind. I thought that was a smart way to sort of acknowledge that he's not really pre present in her life. 
Yeah, and also another thing that I never noticed until just now, when watching both um, an Even Stephen Holiday special and watching Luna, Losing Nana Bishop, Jonas's hair is gray, so it definitely showcases on how much time has passed between those two episodes. And mm. so, yeah, I never knew that. I never knew that his hair actually grayed out in that episode. So, in in that episode of an Even Stephen Holiday special, when he takes off his hat, it's all brown. But in Losing Nana Bishop we actually do see gray streaks that's actually pretty cool that's awesome i feel like season three and late season two he might become more relevant i'm hoping we get a few more pieces of that puzzle for sure Oh yeah, don't, definitely. You will. Don't you worry. All right. So while walking to the park, Ginger learns a little bit more about her grandmother. He starts telling her stories about how when she was a baby, she had trouble getting to sleep, and that um, her grandmother would drive around for hours and hours until she fell asleep. And we even have Jonas impersonating as Lois, which is actually pretty hilarious. If you think that uh, you're going to have to drive a car every time that she wants to take a nap, you're out of your mind. <laughs> Yeah, his impression's pretty good. I thought it was hilarious. Like, you, in that sort of way where it's not like a great impression, but you can tell that they've they lived together for years. Yeah, they've known each other for a long time. So we definitely do get to see that even uh, Jonas knows about Lois's quirks. So between an even Stephen Holiday special and this particular episode, it's nice to see Ginger and Jonas coming together. And don't worry, there'll be plenty of opportunities in which we do, and especially one that is absolutely amazing. But uh, we will not get into that until much later. But here, it's actually really nice, in which he starts telling stories about his mom, and he even says that he made uh, that his mom even made up for the fact that his dad was a disappointment must run in the family which yeah i guess you know some things repeat in you know over and over with you know him ending up being a disappointment for ginger and carl yeah carl always has some mean stuff to say to him but ginger is pretty good at sort of staying kind it's almost he's harder on himself than ginger is on him really and it's hard to have a ton of sympathy for him, but he also is kind of a pathetic character. Yeah, he kind of is. And then, I guess, well, um, there's this one thing that I really need to discuss about. I mean, sure, for maybe some people, they would think of this particular scene as absolutely nothing. But it's actually a really subtle hint of continuity. So... Here's what it is. So we have the scene in which when Lois is walking around putting glue traps all over the attic because she thinks there's rats up there. So we have her finding Jonas's home movies. And then when she digs around, she sees that there are squirrels all over the attic. Uh, for those who are wondering what I'm talking about, I want you to watch Never Can Say Goodbye. And I want you to look into one particular scene in which there's a squirrel that's climbing up in the roof into a hole. And that happens at least twice throughout the series leading up into losing Nana Bishop. So yeah, throughout this entire time, there have been squirrels in and out going on top of the roof inside to the attic, which is where all the squirrels came from. Yeah, that's some next level stuff. Wow. <laughs> that is detail. Yeah, I definitely would not have noticed that. Yeah, I'm sure for a lot of people, they didn't catch it the first time, especially myself. But yeah, when rewatching the show again, you kind of do, you know, get little... Um, bits of continuity in that. Like, just right now, I didn't even notice about Jonas's hair. So, yeah, uh, there you go. Yeah, so continuing on. So, we have Hoodsy wondering about how he's going to get himself out of the situation of giving the speech in the funeral. And he puts on the mask, not knowing that the key is missing. And now, and the day of the funeral has arrived, and he's stuck wearing the mask. He decides that he's not going to ride over with his family because he doesn't want them to know that he's wearing the mask. And so then we have the funeral taking place on a boat, which is very interesting, to be quite honest. I've never heard of a funeral taking place in a boat. I even love that Macy line in which she said, I think Claire Patcher was the one who started the trend. Yeah, that's a good line. And I, it's, it's, it is clever that the boat arrives at the cemetery. So it is kind of convenient in a way. Maybe that's the wrong word, but it's... Uh... It feels like one communal experience, and that's pretty cool. Okay, so continuing on. So now we cut into, um, you know, Hoodsy's side of the story, in which he's giving off the speech about his Nana. And he talks about how it, it, it kind of is a bit of a downer at first, about how he's kind of negative to her, saying, like, Nana never let me do this and this and that. Nana always was kind of um, scolding me instead of Dodie. You know, Nana took me to the Nutcracker, and I thought it was pretty boring, but the Nutcracker... 
crack, uh, but the the fight with the Rat King was pretty cool. And then he slowly kind of warms up to his Nana Bishop, talking about how he's gonna miss her and he's gonna uh, miss the way that she pinches his cheeks and the blue foam and rum raisin and that she's now in the big bingo hall in the sky. So it's actually pretty cute and it's actually pretty touching that he was able to kind of warm up to the fact that he's going to miss his grandmother, even though he wasn't that close to her. Yeah, and this speech is such a great moment. It's so well done. It's so true to Hoodsy, but still true to the moment, I think. I I just love the way that they handled this. I think it's, like I said, very true to character, but very much you can you can feel the sort of way that he's sort of working through it himself while he's giving this speech. How at the beginning he's like, you know... I didn't really get along with her, and like you said, how he slowly warms up through it. I just, I think it's incredibly written, incredibly acted, and one of the better moments, in my opinion. Yeah, it's morbid, too, besides just the obvious death reference, but the coffin kind of sliding back and forth. It's a pretty unforgettable moment of the show. I didn't remember every detail from this episode, having only watched it twice, But that moment, I will never forget of this show. One of the three or four big moments. Yeah. And even uh, one of the more funnier moments is when, um, you know, Nana Bishop's coffin is being lowered down. We have Mr. Bishop saying, oh, mother, and he falls down six feet under. And then Hoodsy's like, I want to go down there, too. And Joanne grabs him and says, you will do no such thing, Robert Joseph. Yeah, she goes, David Charles Bishop, get out of that grave this instant. (laughs) That's so her. (laughs) Which, it shouldn't be as funny as it is. And, like, I don't even think he falls. I think he's throwing himself onto the casket, which is really heartbreaking. But (laughs) he's just so ridiculous and such a, like, schlubby guy. (laughs) that, That he's so similar looking to Hood Z. You just can't help but grin a little bit. Yeah, and um, and then the episode ends with Ginger watching the home movies, and she kind of thinks about Hoodsy's eulogy, and she says one of my favorite lines in the entire series about how uh, Hoodsy's eulogy touched her, and that sometimes we can get mad or feel bad whenever our family members say some mean things, but then one day they're gone, and all you have are the memories. And so you should really appreciate whatever family member that you have right before they're gone. I even mentioned this in my top 15 as told by Ginger's episodes list, but I guess for those who don't know, I could say it right here. So I had a cousin who lived outside the country, and she and I, we never actually had a close relationship with one another. Whenever she would come by to visit, I would just say, hey, how's it going? And then she would say hi, and we would just be on our way. We were pretty much the opposite, so we never really spoke to one another. She actually got along more with my sister and my other cousins than me. But then a few years ago, she died in a tragic bus accident while she was on her way home from college. And my family was beyond devastated, and I felt sad too. Um, And I was just... I mean, it shocked me because she was like... I don't know, she must have been like 25 when she died. So, yeah, it was just like really shaken to me about how a family member that I didn't really, you know, really connect with just was gone in just a flash. And I didn't know how to feel about it. Wow, yeah, so that's a really pretty direct connection to how Hoodsy was feeling. Yeah, something like that. So, yeah, I think that uh, that wraps this episode up. We can give our ranking of yay, nay, or meh. So, yeah, who wants to start? I'll start this one out, and I will give one of the few super yays that we have around here, right? I think that this one really does... It's one, it's one of the best episodes of the series. I think it defines so many things so well. It tackles so many topics in such a short time period, and it does them all very well. So I'm going to go ahead with that. All right, uh, this one's also a super yay for me. It's like my fourth or fifth, maybe. I'm probably a little too overzealous with them, but there's a lot of good episodes of this show, and this one is certainly one of the standouts. 
Yeah, and I'll definitely give this episode a super yay as well, as well as the other episode that we talked about a few weeks ago, The Nurse's Strike. I guess I didn't really thought myself through on that. But yeah, I really do love this episode. In my opinion, it's the best episode that features Dodie. And it has great moments with Hoodsy. It has great moments with Ginger and Jonas and getting to know about her family that us as an audience didn't know about. And it tackles in such a subject like death in a very real way. So absolutely, this is definitely one of the best episodes in the series. And, you know, I'm sure, Eric, if you ever listen to this, the writing in this episode is so much better than Gym Class Confidential. I know it's your personal favorite, but I think that the way that it's handled is really amazing. So, yeah, I'm going to have to give this one uh, my super yay as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening, guys. Tune in next week as we talk about episode 28. Hope to see you around soon. And thank you for listening.